So we just saw Vicky, um, so, and it's fresh for us, so we'll, maybe we'll start there. Um, I don't know, I, 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 I don't know Vicky, but I feel like I do now. Um, there's just, there were, there, it, I know it's not a narrative piece, but there's just so much about love, relationships, um, the things that couples say to each other, um, uh, the world in which we live with others in. I, I, I just, I felt like surrounded by that. So I know this piece had a different origin because um, it was part of a larger work. Can you give us a little idea of how, how Vicky became Vicky? There is a simple explanation when, you know, necessity. Necessity m makes um, choreographers uh, answer a request by a presenter. Um, and I love those challenges because I need to think compact, I need to think efficient, cost efficient. Um, and you know, I was thinking narrative or not narrative, it's like saying that life is not a narrative. Mm -hmm. And how do we say that? Because it's, it's not one, but it's filled with plenty. And I think that's Vicky, she's uh, struggling. I've been struggling for a while. Um, the cultural difference for me, the loneliness of LA, the men that are afraid from a strong woman in um, recently at least. Vicky's charged. I think the heart of it is knowing um, that all of us are, even if we hide it, and even if we hide it very well. I think we're filled with disappointment and crave more and mm, things are attractive to us and we're often afraid of it. And um, I think Vicky thinks about all of those things, um, the group, the single, all of those. So I wanted to ask about the duets in Vicky. They're, they're really um, powerful, um, yours especially, um, <laughs> the ju jumping through hoops. And I, I, just, I love the sort of directness of your movement. Just here's the hoop. Just you know, nothing fancy, but it's so potent. Can you tell us a little bit about how they were developed? Um, did the dancers contribute? Was there a, a prompt that each duet had to discover? Um, a little bit about your working style to create that piece. In this case, I created all the movement. Um, sometimes I, I love transforming in my head and body to become one of my dancers or both of them. And I try to think what will flatter them, even if my body won't um, accommodate that. So by becoming them and trying to tell a simple moment that all of us share. I, sometimes I look at dance and I feel that, yeah, it's very impressive, but it's very removed from something that I can cry from or laugh from. And I really want to cry and laugh. It's really important for me when I see a movie, when I go to theater, when I walk on a hike. I want to cry and laugh, it's important for me. So I think, yeah, it, it's naked, a little more naked and simple, and it's real. You know, we, We're selling a fantasy, all of us. We, we want to be a fantasy and we pay a price for it. So I don't know, I don't know if it's the right direction. I don't know if we're um, brave enough and honest enough, and those should go together and um, I think simplifying, while, while it is virtuosic, it, it is impressive physically and it's uh, challenging for the, for the dancer, but at the same time, it's not something that you and you and you can't do, you know? It's something that is, is it's, a, it's home. It's, it's things you see at home, you feel at home. So I think it's important for me to feel at home on stage. I feel more at home recently on stage than anywhere else. Um, let's talk a little bit about the first piece. So this was a collaboration with an Iranian-American composer, Ahmed Walazada, mm -hmm. and you had worked with him before, I think? Or? It was, yeah, it so was a Tell us about your evening. collaboration. Yeah, he's a very cool um, insurance agent. Oh no, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah, that does hip hop. And a DJ, yeah. Yeah, he does hip hop you would never, ever recognize, you know, you would never think he, he does. And 
something so humble and also straight to the point. He's just very talented. He doesn't even make an effort. And um, this groove is related to, again, home for me. I'm Moroccan, half Moroccan, half Iraqi. Um, so Arabic music is how I grew up. It's what I love the most. Um, so it clicked very well. The JCC in LA connected between us. Um, they had this project of a Jewish artist and non-Jewish artist, and they funded the 60 Minutes piece, which Exhibit B is based on. And um, because of the topic, and you know, I I leaned. I never did that before, and, and not since then. But I I decided to give a comment or a note about Israel and the situation and how I grew up. And it's, a quite, it's quite exhausting, you no, know, this piece, and almost, um, it's just, things just hit you all the time. And I grew up in Jerusalem, and that's how it was. And I was just there three days ago, and nothing changed. Nothing changed, they're still in this loop, and I'm amazed by it. I kind of salute them and, and disagree with them at the same time. Oh, this should stop, it has to stop. But the only way to deal with it is a bit of sense of humor and uh, admitting that this is it. I wanted to ask about the, there's a, a du I guess it's a duet. The two men, they're fighting, they stop, they exchange clothes, and then they return to fighting. That was extremely potent for me. I, I'd love to hear how it came about. And so as a liberal, <laughs> um, we always think that, let's just imagine that we're the other person. So it was about, you know, change your skin, replace angles, you'll get it. It would be very easy for you to get it. But then they fight again because, you know, <laughs> I, I really feel a bit, um, I feel hopeless and helpless about the conflict. And I don't, it depends who I speak with. If I want to be the contra, the, if I want to argue, I can pick this side and that side. It's really weird. Um, it's only with that topic. And that, that was this uh, absurd moment for me. Is every movement choreographed exactly or is there a little wiggle room um, to improvise? In exhibit B, everything is choreographed, every single moment. In Vicky, there's one section when they step from that corner in, each one in his character, that is completely improvised. And Vicky is the newest one, and I feel that they are ready. They became artists, you know? Some of them are with me for five years. They came out of college. Um, I had no idea how it's gonna work, and I knew why it's gonna work, but I, d I didn't know how. And um, now they're on their own. They, it's almost like they graduated again. And that is when you can, I think, can put an artist on stage to improvise. Um, so Vicky, I'm proud of it that there are like three minutes there. It sounds a little, but it's not to hold a moment that is completely from intention. So, so then my job is to be so precise with the intention and what I'm looking for, and therefore I have to renew the information. Every run, I have to make sure they remember that it's fresh, that they feel interested. So when they come to you, they can um, forget you mm -hmm. and be busy. Danielle is one of the first Gaga teachers uh, trained by Ohad Naharin, and um, I'm going to let Danielle tell us what Gaga is. Yeah, Gaga is a movement language that is based on improvisation um, through imagery and textures, volume of sensation, um, rhythm, form. All of those help a teacher to guide a student or um, a non-dancer through a workout basically. So it's a kind of a workout for dancers. It keeps uh, enhancing their technique and opens um, a whole new vocabulary and connects them to the animal they are, specifically who they are, and train them to, trains them to understand that it's endless. The movement and taking care of your body is an endless uh, path which you need to choose to do. So for many, it just provides freedom, freedom and trust in, 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 what, in the only thing you really own, which is your body.